Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we want to look at Jesus Christ himself as king reigning from the throne of David. And we can find these scriptures in 2 Samuel chapter 7, 10 through 17, Psalm 89 verse 3, Isaiah 9 and verse 6, Jeremiah 23 verse 5, and Amos 9 and verse 11. We'll also see scripture from Luke 1 verse 32 and 33 and St. John 18 verse 37. Isaiah says of him in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, he says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7 says, of the greatness of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So Isaiah spoke about him reigning as king, reigning forever, and reigning on the throne of David. If we look at the psalm, Psalm 89 and verse 3, Psalm 89 and verse 3, let's see what it tells us about Christ reigning. Everywhere we go, we can see from the scriptures that it is predicted. He says, you said I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and make your throne firm through all generations and this all generations mean all generations so we see that throughout scripture as we will just take a few that the scripture says so yes he will reign as king and he will reign upon the throne of david amos 9 verse 11 and 12 it says, in that day, I will restore David's fallen shelter. I will repair its broken walls and restore its ruins and will rebuild it as it used to be so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name, declares the Lord who will do these things. But verse 13 says, the days are coming declares the lord when the repairer will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes new wine will drip from the mountains and the flow from all hills and in 14 he tells us that he will bring his people back from exile so as we are seeing today it is very plain in many scripture, in many passages, even as the angel said to Mary that her son would be called what? The son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. St. Luke 1 verse 32 and uh, uh, 33. So 1,000 years before, God had covenanted with David that he would establish his kingdom forever. And that would come through a ruler that would be from David's own family. So this covenant was confirmed by the prophets. We see Amos. We see Isaiah. Amos goes on so far as to speak of the restoration of the house of David. 
he says, which in his day was already in shambles. But guess what? Even though Nebuchadnezzar had carried away into captivity the royal family of Judah, he little realized that in that remnant, in due time, there was to be born a king far greater than himself. No man of the house of David had better throne rights than Jesus Christ. In St. Matthew 1 verse 1 through 16, we will see that. We have the royal line from David to Joseph. The man who had thrown rights when Christ was born was Joseph the carpenter. However, it was not to Joseph but to Mary that the coming of the king was announced. Joseph, as we know, was not from the divine kingly line and therefore no claim to the throne could be given to Christ through him. But in St. Luke 3 verse 23 to 31, it gives us the genealogy of Joseph's father-in-law, who is really Mary's father. He too was a direct descendant of David through Nathan, a brother of Solomon. It is through his connection that Jesus Christ would lay valid claim to the throne of David. This, what he is expected to do when he was born. Yes, we see wise men from the east came saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? John the Baptist announced that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king, Jesus Christ himself, came preaching the same message, using the same expression at the beginning of his public ministry, and he later directed his disciples to proclaim that message. That same message is being proclaimed by the believers today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Many times, the king was acclaimed the son of David. The blind men heard him. They knew he was coming. They needed their healing. They cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. During his last week, his royal rights were notable and they were recognized. Jesus admitted to Pilate that he had been born to sit on a throne, the throne of his father David. The Roman governor when he wrote the title that he puts above Jesus' head, he wrote the title in three languages. And he just proclaimed to the entire world that Jesus was king. Yes, Jesus is king. And he shall return to this earth and reign as king, sitting upon the throne of David. And he has rights to that throne through his lineage. And that day is coming soon when he will come and reign as king of kings 
and Lord of Lords. And his throne, as the Bible says, is established to all generations forever and ever. Yes, Jesus Christ is coming and he is coming to reign. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please comment, please share, and please visit my channel on YouTube where you can hear many more Daily Med messages for you. Be blessed.